What's poppin' is Enzo McFly. It's your girl, your car keys, I am. She what it do, man. This your boy, E.S.G. What's up, what's up? It's your girl, Angry Hero. It's your boy, Mikey Iso. What's up? It's your girl, Desiree Simone. And we K22 Radio, man. I know what's going down. The biggest blood in America. Hey, man, you already know who it is. DJ Me What's going on, man? It's comedian Jeff Shelley. What's good, word? Show me DJ Chosen. Say, man, it's Wapping Puerto Rico, man. Ah, baby boy. Baby girl. It's your girl, Beats Simona with Catch 22. What's up, Houston? It's your boy, Quay. I just wrapped a dope-ass interview with Catch 22. Hey, man, say, man, it's the world's most hated promoter. Y'all already know what it is. We rocking with the hottest, hottest radio station coming about the city. Catch 22, party with the in crowd. It's lit. If you want to holler at, if you want any parties, if you want events, make sure y'all holler at this party with the in crowd. Let's go. You're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 radio show on 92kills.com. And we, we are, are back. back. <laughs> we are here. We are here. We are here, y'all. So I just heard that Twenty One Savage is not from America. the U.S. He's from. He's one. from the U.K. <laughs> That's why he that said Twenty One. Yala 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 Me. Yala Me. Just. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. We have a special guest in the building now. Yeah. Honestly, he should probably be a comedian because he'd have me over here laughing <laughs> this entire break. The world's most hated. Promoter up, is in the up, building. What's, what's popping, Will? We live. Shout out Catch Twenty Two Radio. Yeah, yeah. we excited to have you, bro. So I want to talk to you about being a promoter um, and being out in that industry. How did you get your start into that industry? Man, really, honestly, I really have been throwing parties since like high school. You know what I'm saying? Like we used to always throw parties when our parents and shit would leave. You know what I'm saying? Stay in the suburbs, so it was a pretty good area. You know, all the girls would come over. Then, like as I went to college, uh, I pledged in a fraternity, Omega Psi Five. So I, I was like running all the parties and different kind of stuff like that. From that point, it's just like one move after another. Uh, I started doing my own events. Then we started like traveling and touring and doing concerts. Then we did like clubs and different kind of stuff. So it's just kind of something that just evolved with me over time. That's amazing. All right, so since you've done pretty much everything as far as promoting when it comes to like clubs, concerts, what would you say is like your favorite type of event to throw? Man, my favorite type of event is concerts. Like I really love concerts because like you get to meet all kind of new people. And we, we would do like a lot of touring. Like we toured with Currency before we toured with Nipsey Hussle. Like we used to do the 420 tour every year. Mm. And we used to go to like Houston, Austin, Dallas. One year we toured with Chief Keith. We did Oklahoma City. We did Dallas. We did Austin and Houston. But I did not know Oklahoma City was that ratchet. And a nigga actually got shot at the concert. Like the shit was crazy. That's what, what? I was about to say. You toured with Chief, like, Who and you still alive. A nigga got shot at Chief Keith concert. Oh, we in Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma City. But Oklahoma City got the like the wildest women. Like it was like <laughs> white girls in college city. They like, hey, can you get me in a concert? I'm like, nah, baby, I gotta pay. She's like, what about now? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> shit, maybe I can slide you in the back. <laughs> Come on, baby, maybe I can slide you in the back. <laughs> So why the world's most hated though? Man, uh, world's most hated promoters is a name that I came up with because I feel like people really hate promoters and they hate on promoters, but a promoter is a valuable member of society. Think about it. Mm-hmm. Tell me about it. You Please come on with the story. <laughs> You're hold on, hold on. 2K. Before you yeah. go into it, uh-huh. you gotta watch your uh, profane titties. Yo, profanity. profane titties. Profane no profane titties. titties. Okay, okay. We got you, got you. We gotta keep it, keep it G rated. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Keep it G. So you know what I'm saying? You're sitting at home, you playing with your controller. Mm-hmm. About to play some 2K, okay. uh-huh. Trey specifically, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you like, dang, what am I going to do tonight? You want to meet some girls or whatever. Nine times out of ten, you work a job. You don't got time to be on Instagram all day seeing who the new girls. You just want to go out, and you want that service already provided and packaged for you. Right. At the club. You want to come to the club. You want to be lit. You know what I'm saying? You want people's sections, everything. Like, that's a full-time job. Like, we have to put all that together. But I feel like... People really talk down on promoters or they hate on promoters mm-hmm. or they try to, you know what I'm saying, be like, oh, he just a promoter, but she, you want to go to the club. You want right. to turn up. People need to turn up. So mm-hmm. a lot of times in a lot of these big clubs, there's all these, I think the reason why promoters have a bad name is because it's all these sub-promoters or people are just saying they're promoters. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or, or people so are, look. Y'all couldn't see off, I mean, because we on air, but, you know, visually, when it's on YouTube, y'all going to see that he just pointed at his pocket <laughs> in the cut. <laughs> like, hey, like, he be doing that. Okay. So do you think that that's the reason why promoters have well, a bad name? Well, well it's, it's actually something that we've been talking about uh, the other day, because, you know what I'm saying, I need some guys who work with me. And the thing is, the reason why I feel like promoters have a bad name because a lot of people promise something and then don't deliver. Mm-hmm. That's, or they'll yeah. tell you something and they don't give you all of the details. So, like, they say, all right, RSVP, you get in free. 
Right. right. But that before 11 is in very small print. Yeah. You got to tell them, like, hey, I need you to get here before 11. So then, let's just say you get there at 11. You say, man, it was free before 11, but it's a long line outside. Because the same person then told a thousand other people they get in free before 11 too. So you have to get in line. So, I mean, it's more so I feel like people being transparent and letting you know exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or telling the person, you hosting my club. Then they host the club and then they get there and they don't have no section. They're not getting bottles and different kind of stuff like that. So one of the things we definitely trying to do is trying to change that dynamic and letting people know exactly what it is. All right. Okay. So have you ever brought, like, wanted to bring somebody out? Like, y'all talk contracts or whatever. Mm-hmm. You sent the bread and then they just, like, flaked? Man, yes. <laughs> yes. How often yeah. does that happen? Man, I, honestly, I don't even think I really want to talk about it because I lost so much bread. Like, I done lost like 20 grand doing that Ooh. before. I was Ooh. supposed to book Nicki Minaj, but instead of going with the right booking people, my homeboy who I was promoting with at the time was like, nah, bro, I got a plug. We can get it for cheaper. We can get it for 15. But this is like right before Nicki Minaj blew up. Right. I'm, talking, I'm talking to the direct manager. Like He like, man, you just send me the bread. We good. We locked in. We got the bread and everything. I went with my partner. It was a lesson learned. I was young. I was like 23 at the time. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really know about all that. But they had contracts and everything. It was a dude from Houston, too. I'm talking about, like, over time, I had sent them, like, 20 grand. Never seen them again in my life. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, that shit was crazy. So how's life as a promoter? Like, you be getting girls, like, crazy? Because you light skin. Who on my life? I'm that question. <laughs> Let me make sure, uh, baby, ain't no lie. Hold on. Damn. I hope she not tuned in. I- can I pass on that question? Or I no, no, uh-huh. no, no, no. We can, we can not talk about you personally. Oh, Let's yeah. talk about, Let's talk about the yeah. life as uh, a promoter. Man, the life as a promoter, I got my two compadres over here to the left, so I'm going to talk about their life. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I'm not going to lie, but I feel like there also is a lot of misconception in the promotional game. Like, for uh-huh. example, people always see me with a bunch of girls and stuff. Like, it's a, just a form of advertising. They're like, you always be around the baddies and blah, blah, blah. But that don't mean that I'm having a relationship with them, but... If you a nigga and you want to go to the club, you want to see a picture with me and a bunch of niggas? No, because I ain't no. coming. I'm not coming. It's, it's, no. it's a sausage fest. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, it, it does have its ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? There's certain girls, like if I wanted to date a specific girl, like, for example, girls who got, like, a good job or whatever, they not dating me. No. Nah. Because like, you're a promoter nah, and you always promoter. got a bunch of women around you. Exactly. They're like, nah, I'm, I'm not going to take you home to my mama to meet my people. Nah, they not. But... The strippers, the models, you know what I'm saying? The YouTubers. Yeah. The ones. <laughs> the influencers. <laughs> the influencers, they're like, yo, you live. I like you. You're fun. You're a fun guy. The ones that want to get in the club for free that don't want to stand in line. Oh, right. my God. We had this concept that he actually invented. It's called a roach. Y'all want to hear what a roach is? Yeah. 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 All right, a roach is basically like a girl who come in the section, but she not contributing nothing. She want to drink for free. She mm-hmm. want to smoke on a hookah. She don't want to pay to get in. Ain't contributing to nothing. Ain't going to post a flyer. Ain't even going to post a flyer to support you. And they only hit you when it's time to go to the club. Right. So ain't no male roaches? Because you said female. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's some, it's, some, it's some male roaches. Hey, what's the scene, bro? Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, like, bro, like, our section, they'll tell you if you a dude and you come in our section, you putting in on a bottle or you not in this hole. Yeah. yeah. You better get, you better, nigga be you're not standing in, up you're not in this area. Come out, look, he be standing at the bottom, he be coming out. out. He be like, hey, pass me. He be on Snapchat. Oh, you stunting for free. No, you got to pay to stunt. <laughs> You gotta pay the stunt. You got to. So how do you deal with having homeboys that want to come by the party? Which is, do they get bottle uh, discounts and all that extra stuff too? Man, well, uh, I mean, as a promoter, naturally in any industry, like even if you're a car salesman, you get discount on cars. So we get discounts on stuff like sections and tickets and stuff like that. So uh, I do have a group of people who, you know what I'm saying, tend to always come out with me, always support, and I feel like my close friends, you know what I'm saying, when they were younger, when they didn't have jobs and stuff, mm-hmm. they would always want to get in for free, but now they got jobs, they got money, so my actual close friends, every time they come out, they buy bottles and stuff like that, they not tripping, but I feel like, uh, like, our first night, we did Mercy, so we do this club called Mercy on Friday, shout out Goodfellas, mm-hmm. shout out Parlay, shout out Drake Kickback, they uh, do Mercy with us as well, but um, our first night at Mercy, when we came to the club, we walked in with 100 people, I'm talking about at first we walked up, we had a pregame, 
we had about 30 people with us. As we start walking to the door, all these extra people like, Will, Will, <laughs> Alex, Alex, Biggie, Biggie, come on, we with y'all. And it was just like kind of like a big snowball effect. But I mean, really, we're more so getting more to the business side of it. And we do right. understand what comes with it. So sometimes we got to turn people away and just let people know what it is. So they can either respect it or don't. So what what uh, venues are you promoting that like now? All right, so right now uh, we have Rose Gold on Thursday. We used to be at Therapy. We moved to Rose Gold now. Uh, we have Mercy on Fridays, and Saturday nights we have this new upscale vibe. It's called Dior. It's this lounge called Crimson, an all-white lounge, upscale, very sexy. Oh, the old, the old luminous. Yeah. Exactly. Right. That's right. where all the cougars at. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say the cougars, but it's like the women who just graduated. They got a job. They know how to get, like, they lace wigs together. It look proper. It ain't crooked. Like, 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 like you know how girls be having a they lace wig and a little thing be right yeah, there? Yeah, be a peel. And you be like, what is, is that it a be mini peeling. headband? No. Yeah. <laughs> all that together. Like, it's just like the women who found their perfect hairstyle. I'm say a mini headband. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's up, y'all? So how does it work? Because a lot of times, I'm seeing this now. Back in the day when I when I was coming up, with the promoters would only be one promotion group at each club. Yeah, sure. Now it's multiple promotion groups. How do y'all split this money, or how do, is it really lucrative to do it that way? Uh, well, I mean, it really, really <coughs> just depends on the specific type of deal that you worked out with the rest of the people. So, I mean, what basically what we do, we have different promotional groups, and we'll go in and we'll work out like a percentage. Like It's kind of like, all right, we got four shareholders on the night, and it's how the profit is divided. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's not like, even though it's a bunch of promoters, it's not like, oh, everybody's splitting the money. It's more so like, all right, this is your... Like your entity. Yeah. And right. then your entity. Yeah, and that's how we... And separate. then y'all whatever y'all get, type yeah. of. For sure, for sure. So if you weren't promoting, what would you be doing? Comedian, for sure. Man. Comedian, gotta be. Uh, <laughs> if I wasn't promoting, my mama on here, so I can't say a lot, a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm Pimp. really... Pimp. 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 My, 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 my mama really on here, so y'all really getting like, the, you know what I'm saying, the diet version. <laughs> but man, nah, if I wasn't promoting, man, what, what, what would I do, bro? Like, I just like putting... I like I like coordinating events. I really can't I really can't say because I really love doing it. You like you know doing that. Yeah. So you you know off air you said that you uh you pledged. What yeah. made you pledge? Oh uh, man, it was just something like I had been around my whole life. My dad's a cute, you know okay. what I'm saying? His dad is my dad, line brother. So it's just something that we grew up in the environment, and it's like. But Ladybug love. didn't play it, so. Nah, he didn't because he wrecking cars. And <laughs> <laughs> His brain messed up a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, but nah, I mean, it's just something I grew up around my whole life, and I always liked the brotherhood aspect of it and the togetherness and just being a part of something bigger than yourself. So yeah, it's just something I grew up my whole life watching, and I always wanted to do. How What's much has being a cute helped your like life? Oh, man, yeah, it's, it's, it's really helped my life because it's really broken me out of my shell because I feel like naturally I was like a shy person. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying, the Omega, we have a very rambunctious nature. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We're very wild. And, I, you know what I'm saying, when I was in college, it really helped me out because I got to travel. I got to go see other cities. Mm -hmm. And then just the networking aspect of it, got to meet all kinds of different people. So, yeah, it's been pretty beneficial. That's dope. So um, I did want to talk to you about something because um, you put on shows, you put on events and things like that, and I have a group. Um, <laughs> the name of this group is Thick and Nasty. Ooh, okay. Like yeah. Okay. Good. You may change your mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we we are Thick and Nasty. Okay. Um, and it won't Drew, sound too excited. No Drew, kind of explain what <laughs> Thick and Nasty is and who we are. Uh, well, with him it's kind of difficult, but I could be definitely be a background promoter. Background oh, promoter. That's what it is. Now, what it is is like you know you got your spots, uh -huh. I got my spots. Yeah. So I'm not gonna promote your spot. Like I'm promote my <laughs> own spot at the time you promote yours. But it's gonna kind of be like a we gonna have like a, a Skype party. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. gonna be my your party gonna be on the big screen. My party gonna be on the big screen. But we all gonna be partying together. Together. Oh, so kind of like a kind of like a live stream party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From multiple events. That's dope. Uh -huh. like that. See. See? Yeah, that's you made that work, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but dog, you made that work somehow. Think it nasty. Yeah. That's what we got. So you can book us uh, with featured Brian. Oh, He's yeah, right next to you. Um, you whenever you need us, we're ready. <laughs> so, 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 what do y'all think about? It's, it's rolling. Thick and nasty. Mm -hmm. Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. Also hosted by B King. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. I think that's, that's sexy. We're going to have cucumbers and uh, eggplants and everything. <laughs> if you come with a cucumber, eggplant. <laughs> no, chocolate cover cucumber. Yeah. Host about thinking that. No, but for real, we do. Um, 
we are coming up on our two year anniversary. Mm-hmm. Um, Saturday night is the party bus and um, the club event. Yeah, yeah, the club event. We haven't picked exactly club. what club Crimson. we want to do it. Crimson, I actually, well, now that he said that, Crimson actually would be nice to But do you that. said it's all white? Like, we got to wear all white? No, no, no. Nah, the, the club, the is, club is all sexy. white. I'm going to show you some nah, videos. Nah, it's, it's nice and like, bro. Bit, bro, like, bit. It's, love, it, it, it's nice. It's some uh, grown people in there, not a bunch of kids. It's some very beautiful, beautiful women. Okay. You know? I'm trying to catch a cougar, so. So when did y'all, when did y'all start promoting <laughs> y'all? Y'all there now? Man, yeah, we there, we there right now. This is actually our, our, our second week, our first week. It was just really crazy. We wasn't expecting all the people who came. Last night it rained, but it was still packed. You know what I'm right. saying? Mm-hmm. This next week up and coming is going to be crazy, too, because you got, like, um, TSU and PB. They play each other. We're going to host mm-hmm. an after party for the alumni. You know what I'm saying? We already have a bunch of people inquiring about sections and stuff like that. So it'll definitely be a good look. Who is okay. So how do y'all pick a DJ? Because I know that a DJ is very important, and there's a lot of people around this city that only go to certain places that this DJ is at yeah. or that DJ is at. So how did you end up picking a DJ that rock with y'all? Man, really, with DJs, it's real savage out here, bro. Like, I have so many DJs hit me up. Like, hey, let me DJ your spot. But it's more so like what I look at is terms of value. Like, what are you bringing to the table as yeah. DJ? Mm-hmm. So it's like if, if if you lit, I want to hear you play. I want to hear your sound because a lot of people they be like, I want to DJ, but they mix is terrible. Like that's my pet peeve. Like when your when your transitions trash, uh, man, I hate that. So I mean, a lot of DJs who we do use now, they've been rocking with us for a long time. They've been doing our events. So it's more so kind of like a grandfather clause type thing but I wouldn't say that there isn't room for another DJ to come in uh, upcoming DJs if you are a DJ and you need advice uh, maybe just go to somebody's stuff and offer your service for free it sounds crazy but offer your service for free especially if it's a popping club just offer your service for free mm-hmm. build your name build your audience show that you're bringing value in terms of people so that's how promoters and venues communicate numbers so if you're telling me oh, I want a DJ I'm going to bring you 100 people every time I DJ me as a promoter that's stupid for me to not book you. Right. But if you actually bring me 100 people, promoters going to go tell other promoters, like, hey, this nigga, he live every time I book him. He bringing 100 people. Because yeah. right. we're looking at that in terms of door, of door, door so the same thing with the radio. If somebody tell y'all, I don't want to host, but you didn't ask them to come host, it's like, well, what are you going to bring me in terms exactly. of viewers? Exactly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly. It's, it has to be mutually beneficial. You can't just benefit one side. Right. That's, That's true. Sense. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Where can everybody find you on social media? Social media, Instagram, at World's Most Hated Promoter, all one word. Uh, Twitter, at World's Most Hated. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Facebook, I'll be on Facebook. I ain't going to give you all my Facebook. My mama be on there. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm, trying to that. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to do all that. I'm trying to do all that. Yeah, man. Uh, Instagram, pretty much. So we uh, come in. We're going to pull up. We're not waiting in line. We're on the section. We want to pull bottles. up. Come on. Walk in. See, look, I'm bu- always booking. If you're a promoter, if you need it, I always be working. I'm booking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> but now, nah, for sure, I got y'all mean shit. Uh, just Stuff. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. My mama's on here. Yeah, your daddy said, your mama lives with <laughs> Don't you be up here cussing. Yeah, I, be, I be trying to, bro, but it's just. It's hard. It's hard. I understand. You do it. You do it Monday through Saturday. You know. I mean, we we about to go to a party after this. We got H two O Super Bowl Sunday. After y'all wrap it up, y'all want to come out? We got Hennessy. You know what I'm saying? We got some wings, lots of girls. Come come turn up, man. For sure. For sure. Hennessy wings and girls. Yeah. That sounds like a that party. That sound black, black, black. Yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> that's all I, heard. I like black, it black. black. I like it black. I know, know y'all gotta go. We talked about this earlier. So who y'all got your money on? Tom Brady. Do y'all got your money on the Los Angeles Rams? Because me personally, I believe Tom Brady not losing two years in a row. I'm the taking the Rams because I need for I need for Atlanta to turn up. They need to, to get all their revenue Man. back from the time that they lost in Houston. <laughs> Facts. And then second of all, with you being a that. promoter, uh-huh. were you promoting when the Super Bowl was here? Yeah, I was. I was. Did you realize after the Patriots won how, how much money you lost? We took a dump. Out Bro, of I was hot. <laughs> I was hot. I was mad because Atlanta was out here deep when the yeah, and they were partying. They, like, they nah, were ready. We, the we city closed. It literally was like a shutdown. Like it was. Yeah. I was like, they go had downtown. people booked that Sunday. That Sunday night, I was yep. working with Plus that night, mm. and people was like, "Man, we on the way. We going out of that." As soon as Atlanta lost, everything went to. Yeah, just just nah, We had we had a party with uh, P Diddy's son Justin Combs, and it didn't really do that well. So, yeah, yeah so, everybody yeah, ready to go. Everybody went home. <laughs> <laughs> One more question before I because I want to ask this too. I'm sorry, Tay. Um, but I do want to ask about how do you book celebrities? How does that work? Because if we have somebody that want to come in town, because we're a radio show, we have people that always call like, man, if we get booked in the city, how do you decide on who you booking? Mm. 
to come to the plug? No, nah, that's, that's, that's a really good question. So basically, it would just depend on demand. And like I say, it's all about sales because people done send me a lot of upcoming artists and stuff like that. And they're like, man, you should book him. He hot. I'm like, man, people people who buy sections not coming to the club to see whoever this person is. Right. People who buy sections, that's how we think about the club. Now, we're doing concerts, totally different demographic. So right. Concerts, the people who are buying hip hop right now are suburban white kids, mm-hmm. college kids. That his, listen to like and, Blueface. And Hispanics, yeah. yeah. That's, that's who's buying records right now. That's who's buying shit. Stuff, shoot. That's who's buying yeah. shoot. That's why I'm buying <laughs> shoot. My bad. But nah, that's, yeah. I mean, really, it, it, it's just more shoot. about demographic and targeting and demand. Like, we always do polls and stuff on our Instagram and ask people who they want to see. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Who's the hot new person? And we always stay into like the music and the fashion, different kind of stuff like that. So it would just depend as far as contacting them. A lot of these people, they have the information in their bio. So I feel like that's the safest way to make sure you don't lose money. Like I lost money before. Mm-hmm. You hit the direct email. If they don't respond, move on to another artist. Uh, some of the bigger artists, they work with different agencies. Mm-hmm. Like, they, like you might have to go through a WME. You might have to go to, um, who is this? There's another one called like the Agency Group. Uh, they got a bunch of different agencies based out in L.A. to where you can book your larger talent. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much the safest way. Um, if we like, for example, we just had Key Glock out here. And we reached out to his management, email and bio, did it the safe way. Then we brought him out here to host the after party because he was out here for PB's homecoming. Then we got to bring him back. You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 Radio Show on 92kills.com.